Join us on the fearless pursuit of self-discovery and growth. This is Ivy Unleashed, a Gold Ivy production. Welcome back to Ivy Unleashed. You are listening to Brooke and Andrea. How are you doing, Andrea? I'm excited to just chat with you today. I yeah. feel like it's been a while since we've just had a me and you good old mic chat with some new mic stands <laughs> and uh, some books. <laughs> For those of you watching on YouTube, you can see we don't have our normal setup. I got Andrea um, some nice tripod mic stands for her birthday, seeing if we like them better than our giant boom arms. Um, and they're, you know, they were a little shorter than I'd hoped. One would say you should probably measure something and know what the <laughs> length is before you purchase it, but we're rolling with it. Yeah, I feel cozier, like leaning on the table a little bit, have some, looking at Gabrielle Bernstein's face underneath of it. Yeah, we got some some Gabby Bernstein, some Brene Brown up in here, and Brene, she's going to be giving us our magic for today, Ooh. for what we're talking about today. Those two women, I will take all their <laughs> magic any day. Yes. For you guys that are following along on social media, you know that it was just Andrew's birthday. And I also am about 50 days into my healing journey. And so we thought it would be perfect to share what's going on, give you guys an update of what is going on in our lives. Some some magic is happening, some big things that we want to fill you in on. Yes. Yeah. And it's all, you know, as we were talking about giving an update on what we're doing, we realized how vulnerable we have to be in order to share this stuff. And honestly, I mean, every episode's vulnerable in some capacity. I mean, I'm talking about what I'm working on with my family and my fears, and you're talking about your health and the things you struggle with. I mean, out of the 40 some episodes, like <laughs> 39 of them are teary, you know, like yeah. we're going and all in. require vulnerability. Yeah. 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 And I think we've really seen it pay off. You know, we've really seen, like we created this company in a way that, yeah, it's about health and wellness. And yeah, we're having doctors on and psychologists and all of these wonderful experts, but it's also to talk about why it's hard to have a bedtime routine or how mm -hmm. it's hard to focus on stress management when you have a lot of moving parts of life. And so uh, I'm just thankful you're all tuning in to hear our stories and the encouragement we've been getting back has been, it's been wonderful. So thank you so much for tuning in and hearing the raw, raw footage of our <laughs> life. <laughs> it's not always a highlight reel when it comes to what we're sharing. Yeah. So you just had a birthday. Mm -hmm. How was your birthday moving into a new year? What, what did 35 teach you, bring you, and what are you hoping 36 does? I mean, 35 has been, I mean, I turned 35 right before we launched Gold Ivy. Mm -hmm. And I was just making this momentum up to 35 with like getting certifications and figuring out business laws. And like, I was getting a ton of information and I had no idea that it would, it would blossom into this. Mm -hmm. And so 35 has been really cool. I mean, you and I have been busting our butts to create something beautiful and it's a lot of work, but it's taught me a lot about myself. It's taught me a lot about you. I feel like the way that, you know, in one year we've touched so many people's lives and it's just getting started. It's just really it hasn't exciting. Hasn't even been a year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, the tricky part with having a business on top of a job, on top of three kids and a marriage and a household and all of those things is that it's hard to be fully present sometimes mm -hmm. because when you're an entrepreneur and you're constantly thinking about how to push your business forward or what guests you should have on next or trying to get all of the editing time in or what we're going to post on socials and so many moving parts, so many moving parts that like when you're sitting in a room with someone and they're talking to you, it's hard to just focus on them. And I love people and I love conversations. And so that's something I realized, like, I've never known how to be a business owner and be a sister and a wife and a mom. And so I'm just learning, like, I have to have some, like, boundaries with my mm -hmm. phone and I have to convince myself to turn off my entrepreneurial brain sometimes <laughs> and go to sleep instead of doing the next thing. I mm -hmm. think it's just really taught me that being intentional about what I'm doing 
is even more important than it's been before. Mm -hmm. Especially when you have so much to do on any given minute. Mommy, mom, mom, (laughs) bathtub, you're running around upstairs before we record, before we're meeting a new guest, and it's just madness. And so having these, the structure, these practices in place that you've really had to build over this last year, right? The brain dump, all of these things that we've kind of touched about in, in past episodes. So being more present this year, what practices are you looking to put in place to help with that? Oh, well, first of all, I am working with Catherine Gagnon from episode 34, as you are too. And that has up-leveled every part of the way my brain works. (laughs) And I've only had a couple sessions with her so far. And so with her, the work that we're doing is a lot on how my brain works and rewiring parts of my brain and how it works. So sometimes it's the doubt of what I'm capable of or the worthiness of what Mm -hmm. I should be able to take in. You know, it's, it's really just, it's more than having these practices. It's really shifting the way my brain works and it's very complicated, but a lot of it involves touching base with someone like her and then having accountability with myself, with the practices I want to have in place. So reflecting more, Mm -hmm. writing down the numbers of my budget instead of just thinking about how I should do it, like actually writing it down, knowing that my, you know, with my human design, learning how much structure helps me. And I knew (laughs) that, but knowing like, I really need my morning routine Mm -hmm. more than I have ever needed it. And so I would say number one thing is write what I, what I learned back in 2020 is that I need to be getting up and having that time for myself, whatever it is. It's for mm-hmm. me, and then it helps me get everything done so that I don't feel behind when I'm sitting and having a conversation with one of my kids, and then right. I'm worried about getting things done. So I would say staying proactive with my morning routine is number one, mm-hmm. and kind of sticking to what I've always known works well. You know, reading a Bible verse, now meditation. Meditation is helping you <laughs> time. Yes, yes. You've been talking about meditation for a while, and it's helping me so much with getting intentional with what I'm thinking throughout mm-hmm. the day. So thank you for pushing insight. You're welcome. Push, pushing insight timer has helped me a lot. So that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, I'll continue to dive more into what I'm working on with Catherine. I think she is a magical woman. You guys, I can't even put it in words. Andrew and I will Snapchat each other after bawling, just being like, I don't know what just happened. I think this is what just happened, but I'm not really sure. But I feel tingly I feel when we're talking about rewiring our brain you know before the age of five we have these these things that have been imprinted on us right this sense of feeling unworthy for me it was needing to perform for love and not not believing that being loved was my birthright that I had to earn it and so going back to that child I get goosies just thinking about it about that moment of Catherine guiding me through this meditation going back to that inner child and going into my subconscious, these memories that I didn't even know I had, Andrew too, remembering something from when you were two years old. For me, it was three. And going through this memory and changing what that memory meant, what that what that event meant. Mm-hmm. And then if you listen to episode 34, Catherine goes into, with this rewiring, then every event after that has a different meaning. Mm-hmm. And it goes into this meaning now. And... To just be able to be myself. And then before this, going through the human design and knowing what my authentic self truly is and being like, oh, this makes sense. I can just be. I don't have to act. I don't have to perform. It's like this weight has just been lifted off my shoulders. And we had a listener reach out who is also working with Catherine, like, She is changing lives and we are so grateful. So Catherine, if you're listening, we love you and we are so excited to continue this journey. You know, her whole thing is transformational coaching and it's been so transformational, especially with me pairing it with my healing journey, working with a practitioner who is really helping with the physical side of things, the detox, the getting rid of this, these nasty things and building new healthy bacteria, getting things in a way like how my physiology should be working. And then also having this mindset transformation with Catherine. It's, 
it's been huge. It's been such a game changer in my healing process and the way that, you know, with the healing journey, it's really three steps forward, five steps back, one step forward, three steps back. That's how it feels. And to be able to really tune into what is giving me energy, what is depleting me on my energy, and this work that I'm doing with Catherine from a day to day and how I talk to myself, how that's changing, how I'm embodying how I want to feel and tuning into that emotion. You know, what they say with manifesting, it's really about going into that feeling. How do you want to feel? You know, when you achieve what you want to achieve, what is that feeling? And that's what you need to tap into to create that energy. And like, I don't know, how do I feel something I never felt? You guys, you can do it. We're doing it. Yes. And it's that intentional work and that being vulnerable with someone else, being open to doing this work, you know, and Catherine, for both of us, when she's like, we're going to go back into your subconscious. And I'm, I don't know about you, but I was like, huh? Mm-hmm. How am I going to remember something when I was two or three years old? Like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But, and then being vulnerable to share what I was experience, experiencing. Right. right. Well, and you think if you're going to work with a coach or a therapist, or for us right now, it's Catherine. Like, I never thought I would get that vulnerable with her on the first call mm-hmm. ever. But she listens to you. She listens to me deeper than I feel like I've ever been heard in my life. And it doesn't, it completely makes sense. The pairing, right? Like I am being vulnerable. I'm putting myself in this scenario where I have never, I hardly know her and I am <laughs> crying my eyes out because I am telling her the most insecure parts of my life. I am telling her the most hurtful parts of my life, the biggest fears I have in my life. And so I think the biggest reason it's been so transformational is the ability Mm -hmm. to allow yourself to be vulnerable. You know, it's so scary to let people into that space because there are parts of all of us that feel unworthy of something Mm -hmm. or feel like, you know, we have to perform. You know, that was the same thing happened with me is, you know, I, I need to also know that I am worthy of love just being me as well. Mm -hmm. And I have achieved my whole life from that. But doing this work, it's, it's not a victim mentality. It's not like you blame whoever imprinted that on you. What you're actually doing is you're releasing it and knowing like, Mm -hmm. I was telling myself that this whole time I could see parts of my life where I was overachieving or telling this awesome story before I left a room. So I would impress someone Mm -hmm. or, you know, in a sport that I wasn't even crazy about because I was good at it and it got me a lot of attention Mm -hmm. that I loved getting and it made me feel loved. And and so it's this vulnerable spot that as you're thinking about working with a coach or talking with a therapist, it's a little scary to be like, oh, it's a stranger. Mm -hmm. Am I really going to tell them all that I've been through or my biggest fears? And we've also seen the benefits of being vulnerable, right? Whether it's with her or even just doing therapy on our own before her, Mm -hmm. with each other, with our friends. When we're vulnerable, we're having those deep, meaningful talks and we're allowing ourselves to be seen. Mm -hmm. When we're allowing ourselves to be seen, we know we're not alone. We're not doing this hard thing called life alone. We were never meant to do it alone. That's what I always say. And I say it out loud because I need to believe it myself. (laughs) I need to ask for help. I don't think we can be in a meaningful relationship, we can be our authentic self if we're not vulnerable, if we're not letting the people who are supposed to be the closest with us actually in. Mm -hmm. And then we're not living out our truth. And so to be vulnerable is to open up, is to do the things that are scary, to ask for help, to voice your needs, to say what's actually true to you. And we talk a lot on this podcast about asking the hard questions, letting people know that they're not alone, asking the question of how are you doing? No, no, no. How are you really doing? Mm-hmm. Right? We say, how, how, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. No, no, no. Like what's actually going on in your life? And when we do that, we give others permission to be vulnerable as well, to be themselves. We're mm-hmm. modeling that behavior that, it's okay to be who you are, who you want to be. Also, though, you can't force someone to be vulnerable. And I think it's a good 
point, like you're giving them permission and maybe they're just going to ponder it for a while. I Mm -hmm. think sometimes there's that leg and I'm such an open book. I talk about these deep things all the time and I'm not getting it from the other person. I think sometimes it's just more of a process for some people to get there. And that's what's tough sometimes. Like for me, I, it's super easy for me to be vulnerable Mm -hmm. or my husband not so much. Sometimes it's hard for him to put the words on it. You know, it's hard for him to talk about feelings. It's not, it's kind of foreign to him. But when you think about your relationships, you know, this morning I was doing a meditation and on Insight Timer, and it was a guided meditation where she was saying, think about your relationships. Think about what you want from your relationships. And when I think about that, I think about connection, true Mm -hmm. connection, intimacy, you know, feeling like you're heard, feeling like you're seen, feeling like you've provided that for someone else, right? And so I want to encourage all of you to think about the last time you had a conversation with someone and you felt so fueled and connected by it, right? You felt like, wow, I get them or they heard me or I feel seen or I feel like super inspired from that conversation, I guarantee it's not about the weather. You know, it's going to be something a little bit more vulnerable than that. And Mm -hmm. I've noticed just doing this work myself, digging into my fears or insecurities and things like that and really getting into them is pushing myself to share it. Mm -hmm. Because it does sound a little foreign to go back to a memory when you're two. I honestly didn't think I could remember anything before seven. And with the right coaching, I could get there. But if we want to grow as people, if we want to be happier, if we want to have more conversations that Fell feel like, up. yeah, that feel like we can trust people or feel like we can really share our struggles when we're struggling or, you know, even be vulnerable. I think s- talking about what you're good at and your strengths and how you can celebrate them with someone. Sometimes I think people mm-hmm. hide their successes because they're just too humble or they're afraid to talk themselves yeah. up, but that's, that's vulnerable really, too. That's a really good point. Like vulnerability isn't just talking about what's hard. It's talking about what's going good, like being open about all emotions, knowing that, you know, we want to be able to celebrate these wins with the people that we love and care about. And we want them to feel like they can come to us too. You Mm -hmm. know, it needs to be that two-way streak. And I think it's difficult when you are okay with being vulnerable and the people around you aren't. And it's, it's like, how do you, how do you navigate that? Right. When it's the gossip, when the conversations around you aren't the conversations that you want to be having, but it's with people who you do enjoy being around, who are your friends. How do you start that conversation, right? Of, hey, this is what a meaningful conversation means to me. Mm-hmm. I think it's it's hard when everyone is in a different stage of life, stage of their journey, Right. I think I am, I've always been pretty, pretty vulnerable and and an open book. And maybe that's why I've always connected with people that are older than me. Cause I'm like, tell me how you did this. Right. Like, I want to know, I want to know, I'm curious. And, and I don't know, as I ponder, as I'm in this stage of life, also in this healing journey where I know that I have to be vulnerable to heal because I can't move forward if I'm not healing everything, my mind, my body, my soul. It's that idea of releasing it and stepping into Brooke 2.0. With Brooke 2.0, I feel like kind of what you're getting at is that next level friendship you're kind of searching for where it does take courage to have that conversation. And sometimes Mm -hmm. it's not talking about it. Sometimes it's just not participating. Sometimes it's just sitting there and refusing to step into the gossip or it's stepping away and going to the bathroom so you don't have to be a part of it. Maybe Mm -hmm. they get the hint. Sometimes if it's that close of a friend and it's worth the conversation, it could either be in the moment or privately, but I feel like it takes courage to change your conversations. It Mm -hmm. really does. And, you know, I'm learning that. And I think people struggle with that at any age too. Yeah. I think what I struggle with, especially right now on, on the topic of being vulnerable as I'm sharing this, is people who 
aren't really familiar with the functional medicine route, uh, right? They haven't had any experience with it. And so to them, all of these supplements, all of these regimens that I'm doing sound kind of crazy. And they are, it's a lot, but it's also the deep root healing of what's actually causing these issues and having them for four years and going through them and to the, I don't want to say average human, but to someone who, you know, goes to the doctor, gets prescription, gets whatever, and is fine, carry on your way. They see it as, why didn't someone catch this right away? Or, oh, here's my experience, right? And so when they do ask me how I'm doing, it opens that conversation. And so it's like, do I want to have that conversation? Because I know they don't understand. So there's, it's lonely. It's lonely to be in a healing journey. And something I I talked to Catherine about is it being lonely and outgrowing certain friendships because I want to have deep, meaningful conversations. I am no longer the same person that I was and I can't participate in the things that I used to. And so that's also lonely. And, And something that we had talked about was, you know, it's lonely People don't understand, but it's not theirs to understand. It's not their journey to walk. It's not their journey to understand. So knowing that, but wanting people to still ask me, like, how, how are you doing? How are you really doing? Right? To have those questions asked to me, it still means the world. The people who I think are really close who haven't asked how I'm doing, like, it, it almost makes me think if they were in the same position, like I hope to God, I would say I would check in. Mm-hmm. Then it makes me think, well, I can't control them, but I can control what I'm doing now. Am I checking in on the people that I love and care about? Like, what can I control? So I think when we think about vulnerability and these meaningful relationships, it's really knowing like, what do you want out of it? And that you can only control you. Mm-hmm. So it, it just has me thinking about what do I really want out of my relationships in life and how can I model that behavior? Right. Yeah. And there are different levels of friendships we've talked about before where maybe that person that's not even checking on you doesn't mean you have to completely disregard them in your life, mm-hmm. but maybe they just are, you know, tier one of a friendship, right? And you have, you lower the expectations for them. Yeah. And then you have your two and your three or however you want to do it. Yeah. And there's, there's a saying, you can't expect people to treat you the way you would treat them. So wrapping my brain around that has been difficult, especially when I know how healing being vulnerable is, right? So to open up that conversation, to have that invitation to talk and to be like, yes, here's what's going on. To not want to overstep. Also to protect my energy. Mm-hmm. It's it's just, it's a very interesting time for me. I'm taking on an observer role as I'm not going out. I'm not partying. You know, I'm still doing some things, but then I regret it and wish I was in bed by 9 p.m. And so it's it just, as you're doing this, this deep work, you understand that being vulnerable it helps, right? It's like, it comes back to you tenfold. But in the process, it's a bit of a mind F. (laughs) Yeah, well, I think with conversations, with relationships, I mean, all we want as humans is connection. Mm -hmm. We want to feel connected. The only way to feel connected is to be your real raw self with your real raw emotions. And you don't have to always walk around like an open wound. But if you're not having that connection with people, it makes it difficult to feel what we're all searching yeah. for, you know. And so, you know, tell your tell your people vulnerable things. Tell them you're working on you know, having deeper conversations. And if, if you feel you're not feeling super courageous that day, maybe it's not the day to do it. But yeah, I think it is difficult to kind of rip off that bandaid of how are we going to do this? If we're going to be good friends, like I'm going to need a little bit more from you. Yeah. But also knowing that, okay, I have to share. I have to be vulnerable. Like, am I being too vulnerable? Like, am I oversharing? <laughs> like, do people really, like, maybe people don't want to talk about this stuff. Yeah. Well, you could guess all day what <laughs> other people want from you. But ultimately, if you're feeling a void in a friendship, you mm-hmm. just have to 
listen to that and get up the courage to say something or expect less from the friendship. That's my take at least. I think staying away or limiting my amount of time on social media during this process has been huge because the comparison game is real. I just need to remind myself that other people's opinions, they're not my problem. They're not mine to carry. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. And that by thinking that it does is only hurting me. Mm -hmm. The opinion of others is important in our ability to be vulnerable. I mean, it's what, it's what stops us. Mm -hmm. It's what scares us. It's what limits our conversations. We're so afraid of what people are going to think if we say something stupid or weird. And, you know, we have these thoughts going on in our mind all day, but like sometimes when we're going to actually say them out loud, we feel like we're a weirdo, (laughs) you know? And so it scares us from talking about it. Mm -hmm. And so what I love anytime I'm thinking about vulnerability, I always lean back on Brene Brown because all of her books have to do with vulnerability and shame Mm -hmm. and courage. And her book, Daring Greatly, is just like in my top five. It is so good. Incredibly great. If you have not read Daring Greatly by Brene Brown, I highly encourage you to read it. It will change your life. And she starts off the book with a quote from Theodore Roosevelt that a lot of what she talks about really relates to. So Theodore Roosevelt said, it is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly. And that quote talks so much about just showing up, Mm -hmm. like not letting people in the cheap seats have the comments about what you're doing in your life. These random people that are hating us on social media, like who cares? Like who cares? Because they are not doing the work. And all of our intention is Mm -hmm. to help people grow ourselves, better our families, level up, help people embrace their truth and live their best life. And so what we're going to focus on is staying in the arena Mm -hmm. and fighting the good fight and putting out information that's helpful and working on ourselves continually because we are imperfect and we are going to mess up, but at least we're doing something, right? At least we're not sitting in the cheap seats talking about other people and how they're messing up with whatever they're doing. I mean, we're failing over and over and over Mm -hmm. and learning from it. And, and by failing, it takes being vulnerable to actually get in the arena And then it takes the courage to stay despite all of the trolls and the negativity, but to say, hey, until you've walked in my shoes, you don't understand. And going back to what I said earlier, I don't expect you to understand, but I know that my intentions are true. I know that what's getting me out of bed in the morning is to serve and to help others. And I'm learning and I'm human and I'm imperfectly capable of doing these things that are making me a better human and making me grow. It starts with being vulnerable and taking that first step into the arena. Yeah. I mean, just for an example, you know, I had someone ask me the other day, this may be a dumb question, but how do you even get a podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts? And I'm like, Good for you for having the courage to ask that question. Heck yeah. Because we- You think we knew? We didn't know. (laughs) We walked into that arena having no idea how to get here. And now we hit 8,000 downloads this week, Mm -hmm. you know, and it feels so good to know that people are sharing it and it's working. But at first we didn't know what we were doing. I mean, we had no clue. We have never been super in tune with technology. And now I feel like we're wizards. Eh, Speak for yourself. (laughs) Some days. (laughs) When it works. Yeah, no, but, you know, we take that next right step. What feels right, I think, really tuning into that feeling. And for me, the feeling that vulnerability brings is only positive things. In the, in the moment, it's scary. But when I don't think of the opinions of others, the judgment, when I really focus on how I want to feel, what's true to me, it allows those floodgates to open and Mm -hmm. and for that transformation for the beautiful things to occur that are ultimately helping me level up and become a better version. Yeah. 
And something Brene talks about too is how a lot of people associate vulnerability with weakness. Mm -hmm. And she's saying, absolutely not. Like the most accurate measurement of courage is to let ourselves be fully seen and be honest. Mm -hmm. Like nothing is more courageous than that. So if you think being vulnerable and sharing your struggles is weakness, it's the opposite. Like that takes balls to <laughs> say like, I need help. Right. Like, and what a beautiful thing to do so that you're not lonely anymore, so mm -hmm. that you have someone to talk to about it. And she also talks about too, that, you know, you can be vulnerable with boundaries. Like we are not saying you should tell everybody your problems <laughs> or everything that you're good at. Like, I do think that Certain people earn your vulnerability. Yeah. She actually carries a small sheet of paper in her purse or her wallet or something where she has her five people on it, mm. like giving herself permission. If I am struggling or if I want to talk about my strengths or celebrate something, those five people are for sure in. Like, I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to question it. Like, those are my people. Mm -hmm. They've earned my trust and I can be vulnerable with them. I just love that. Even that, just yeah. thinking now, you know, for those listening and I'm thinking myself, like, who are those five people? Mm -hmm. Who would those people be? And when you're in that moment of, Ugh, I don't know if I, I don't know if I can get out of this dark place. Like I, I need something. I need help. What do I need? You have those go-to people that you can reach out to. Yeah. And I think one of the fears is if I show them the real me, will I still be accepted? Will I still be loved? Can I still be in the circle mm -hmm. if I'm a little bit more honest than I have been? And it's okay to have that fear. Like, that's normal. So many people feel that way. We obviously did. We felt like we had to achieve in order to even have that mm -hmm. love and acceptance. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, like, what does being vulnerable look like for you? I think it's different for everyone. I think there's different stages of being vulnerable, saying how you're actually really doing you know, instead of just saying good, like that could be a huge step for you mm -hmm. versus sharing your deepest, darkest secret with someone. So know that whatever feels uncomfortable, whatever feels scary, but you ultimately know it is good for you and is going to help you grow. Like that's what you need to reach for. Well, think about if you weren't vulnerable with what's going on with your health. If you didn't actually share your story, like think of how many people you've been connected to mm -hmm. and different things that have happened since you've actually said how sick you've been. <laughs> You know, if you didn't go yeah. there, if you just kind of were like faking it till you make it, you know how sick you would be right now? You know, I went through 50 doctors and it took starting my own podcast to <laughs> actually find out what's the, what's going on. But it's proof yeah. that it pays off. It does pay off. Like you will see benefits in the depth of your conversations, in the connections you have with people. You know, just from what we say on this podcast, like the messages we get and the people we've been connected mm -hmm. to, like it is wild how you totally get a return on your investment when you are vulnerable and you share the things that anybody can relate to in your mm -hmm. human experience. I mean, we all have grief and we all have insecurities and we all have beautiful moments that happen that we can like laugh about together. And I think if we're all searching for that human connection, like let's just get vulnerable and have more fulfilling conversations with each other. Totally. And, you know, not only do you know that by being vulnerable, you're growing long term, it's going to help you out. But to bring this full circle back to your goal of this year being present, when you're vulnerable, when you're sharing what's really going on, when you're having that deep human connection, it forces you to be present. Like you are fully like wrapped up in the moment. You are where your feet are. You are saying what's true to you. Like know that in the moment you are helping yourself out by just simply being present, by saying what's true, what's real for you and allowing others to come in and, and for you to actually be seen, you're building your present muscle. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw a meme the other day that was like, people are not looking to be impressed by your words. Mm -hmm. They're looking for a home, somewhere they can curl up with a blanket and feel seen and heard and loved and accepted. They're just looking for a true connection. They're not looking to be impressed. They're looking for that feeling that you're going to give them. That reminds me of Maya Angelou's quote. People aren't going to remember what you did or what you said. They're going to remember how you made them feel. Mm -hmm. And it's so true. And by being vulnerable, by opening up, you're building that connection and that's that feeling of 
okay, I can be me. This all is right in the world. So we want to not only encourage ourselves to keep <laughs> doing this and sharing our vulnerable thoughts and feelings, but we want to encourage you too, you know, to think about how you want your relationships to look, what they're lacking, where you can kind of open up a little bit more and just be your true authentic self. And if our vulnerability is helping you guys and you're finding value from it, you know, we just ask that you go leave a review on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, on YouTube. It helps our reach. It helps us serve more and others to hear our message. Absolutely. All right. Now it's time for our three gold stars. Number one, journal about a time where being vulnerable worked in your favor. Two, determine your top five list of who you can share your struggles and strengths with at any point in your life. And three, challenge yourself to bring up an important goal you're working on or struggle you could use support with in a conversation this week. And today for your piece of gold from our girl Brene Brown in her book, Rising Strong. The courage to be vulnerable means taking off the armor we use to protect ourselves, putting down the weapons that we use to keep people at a distance, showing up and letting ourselves be seen. This is Gold Ivy signing off. Listen to your truth and go chase your gold.